What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably been seeing lately that I've been spending a lot of time uh, learning some new CNC software and also trying to clean my garage up a little bit and turn it into a more usable space. But I've got to take a quick break from that to show you this new tool that Daniel over at Pwn CNC sent me. And today we're going to talk about exactly what this is, how to set it up, and how to use it with your CNC software and machine. So stick around. So I just want to start out by saying that these depth stop collars are really nothing new. Uh, we've been using them in the CNC industry for a long time. There's even router bit companies that will uh, give you the option to have those installed at different heights on your bits. Um, but there's many that don't give you that option. And a while ago, I tried to come up with a solution for that uh, to be able to accurately set the height of these. Uh, and you know, keep it repeatable, which obviously is the most important thing when it comes to CNC. And I came up with this here, which worked well, but uh, had a couple issues. Obviously being wood, it was a little susceptible to humidity and temperature changes. Um, the aluminum plate that I used on the bottom, I noticed that after a while, it started to get little dimples in it from inserting the bit too far. Uh, or maybe dropping it in there a little hard, and that would ultimately throw off my measurements. Uh, the biggest issue with it is these neck down bits. I just couldn't use them with a design like this. So I stopped using that. Then I just started using this sign bar that I had laying around. And again, this worked well. It was a little bit more repeatable. I would just set it down on a surface, drop my bit in, and I would just reference off whatever surface I was working on. It seemed to be pretty repeatable, pretty reliable, but again, I couldn't fit these larger neck down bits into it. So then Pwn CNC came up with this design here, which is a two piece design. So you can split it in half and you'll notice that it's got this larger opening here measures just over an inch. So theoretically, you could fit a bit in here that measured just about an inch in diameter. This features these plates that can be easily removed. And if you start denting them up, you could flip them over or ultimately replace them. You can also set them at three different heights. So if you're using shorter bits, you can set them at this top height. Longer ones you can set here or you can set them in the middle. It comes with a handy little spot to hold the Allen key that you're gonna need to tighten the collars. And you can even order these in a kit that come with four of the collars. So when you get these collars, you're gonna notice that they've got some oil or grease on them. And I like to just use a little bit of solvent. And I just drop them in a cup, clean them up. And then I also like to clean off the shafts on my router bits because they usually have a little bit of solvent on them too. So just get that removed. Be careful not to cut yourself on those bits. All right, then just loosen the screw on it a little bit. And you're just going to slide this onto your router bit. Now you notice that one of these faces is perfectly flat. One has some grooves in it. Put it with the grooved side facing towards the head of your bit. So now you're just going to drop all of this in and you just wanna make sure that the head of your screw is facing up like this. And you can go ahead and push the bit down. Now I'm using the shortest setting here because these are some shorter bits that I'm using. So if you have longer ones, obviously you're going to use that bottom setting most likely. Now we can just slide this back together. It's got some metal pins in there to hold everything. Locks together really nice. Uh, one th other thing I want to mention while we're here, really nice 3D printed body on this thing. Great finish. Uh, hopefully one day I'll be able to 3D print stuff that nice. But again, just push that down. Make sure that's pushed all the way up against those aluminum plates. Then you can just insert your Allen key and tighten that up.
All right, so that's our first bit. Now let's go ahead and try one of these neck down eighth inch bits. So again, we'll put our collar on. We've got everything cleaned up, grease and everything removed. You can insert that into our tool. Just make sure that's pushed down good. That's the most important thing that I can recommend on this. Uh, otherwise, this thing is pretty much idiot proof. Even I can use this thing and not mess it up. All right, now we've got our next bit set. So unfortunately, I don't have a really good height gauge to measure these with, but I can use this caliper here. And we're at about 8740. All right, now let's go ahead and check our V bit. And I'm getting 8740 on that one also. Now, one other thing that I like to do is either apply like a little bit of CA glue and I'll use some activator and drip that down around here. Uh, you can also use green Loctite. That's the penetrating type. And what I recommend is not putting it in on this side here because you don't want to get any gobs of anything on this flat surface and you don't want anything on this shaft to prevent it from going into your collet. Uh, do it on this side here and just make sure you wipe up any drips. And if you do use that penetrating Loctite, that takes about 24 hours to fully cure. So this may be something that you want to do and then come back the next day and use them. For this demonstration, I've just got a simple box with a letter inside it, and I'm going to do an advanced V-carve, which is going to require us to use two bits. So I've got an eighth inch end mill and a 60 degree V-bit selected. I have set the depth on that to just 0.1 inch. Now, if you were using a different program, something like CarveCo, for instance, you would want to make sure that your bits just had different tool numbers to them, and you would still save them all in one file and just send them to your CAM program. Uh, you just need to make sure that whatever program you are using, I'm using Carbide Motion, for instance, is able to understand that it needs to do a bit change and will lift your router up high enough to allow you to do that. So we'll just click OK here, send this over to Carbide Motion, and now we can jump into the machine. Start by inserting our eighth inch end mill, and tightening that up good. And to set zero, I'm just going to use a piece of paper here. Some people may think it's crazy that there's those of us that still set zero with a piece of paper, but it is a tried and true method that has always worked and certainly one of the most reliable methods. I know vibrations may be a concern to some of you uh, by installing this collar on your bit. I've been running these for about two years now um, and haven't had a single issue. I'm still running the original router that I received with my machine and everything seems to be working great. I don't have any additional noticeable shaft play or anything. We'll let the end mill clear out a majority of our material and then we're going to get a prompt to do a tool change here and it's going to tell us to insert that 60 degree v-bit and you'll notice that it raised up high enough to allow us to change that and once we've got that snug down we just click resume uh, click resume again once we've started the router and then it'll just continue to finish this off for us These are some pretty low quality bits that I'm using here. That's why they were still in the packages. Uh, so you'll notice that we certainly aren't getting a nice clean cut. But what I also want you to notice is that the transition between where our V-bit and our end mill was cutting, we have a nice sharp corner and there's no difference in height there. 
Uh, that's really the important thing when you're doing any sort of you know combination cut where you're using a V bit and an end mill. You want to make sure that you can't see where those two bits transition between one another. Thank you for checking the video out. Please make sure you get over there and check out Pwn CNC. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, they're not a sponsor or anything, but I just really like what they're doing. They do some great stuff for uh, not only the CNC, but just the maker community in general. So please go over and check them out. Give them some love. They also make great dust boots and clamps if you haven't already seen those. And I will see you guys over on this next video.